All right, hello everybody. Welcome to this uh, new touch designer tutorial. Today we're looking at uh, true shed tiles. It's going to be a quick and easy one, I think. Uh, very simply, we want to create um, those kind of patterns. Uh, so there's a lot we can do from here, and we, there's a lot of um, di divergence we can take from the setup we're going to do. But the, ra the rather s uh, quick setup and easy one we're going to do is exactly this pattern. Uh, from there, it's pretty. It's, it gets pretty fun to extrapolate and uh, go to do more, um, maybe or dynamic things, which would make it move, or um, just simple and uh, fun stuff. A couple years back, I did some of these, where just ha hand drawing a couple of different shapes and making sure to connect them in the right way. Beautiful. So. Let's jump back inside Touch Designer. So let's just look at what we're going to do before we're going to do it. So we're going to basically instance um, rectangle sops um, in, a, in a grid fashion super easily. And uh, with the right texture, we should be able to create patterns. So before uh, we, we do all this, let's just think about it. So um, if uh, we just think about uh, white, um, white rectangles, we want to do is create connection between each of them and uh, it's super uniform so it's four connection for a four square polygon or rectangle so in this manner however I rotate each of these instances it should always fit together so if I bring just back in um, my right texture I connect them in this way and everything will always fit super easy let's go and do this all right, so let's start a brand new um, folder with a base and let's call it uh, true shot pattern. So as I always do, I'm going to start with adding custom um, custom variables. So I'm going to add a setting page. OK, just been added here and I'm going to add a resolution variable, which is going to be which is going to be an X, Y and um, an aspect ratio which is going to be a float this is oh no what have i done uh float here we have it and like this we can already start going um that's pretty much it so let's say a 10 by 10 10 by 10 it's going to be our start our starting resolution our um, aspect ratio is going to be resolution of um, res x divided by res y so not a resolution but a float which right now will give us one but let's check it out if we put 16 by 10 this does not work because i did not change x by y here and let's make it a tiny bit more readable that seems just fine to me okay let's jump in Let's pull out a GLSL to create our UV from which we will be able to instance our rectangle. So we're just going to create a grid in a top um, top operator. So control E to open um, to open a, a text editor. Um, before we go into the text editor, let's import couple of our parameters that we have prepared so I'm going to rename this GLSL UV first of all yes and in my common output resolution let me drag this inside and actually I wanted to have it in I want to bind those I like to bind resolution because if I change it here so if I change it here it changes here that's the idea be behind the bind uh, then there's two things I want to prepare. I want to prepare a U resolution. So I can actually do the exact same thing here. This time it can be a reference because this will never modify um, upstream. And I want a U aspect. And I'll just grab that guy. Okay. Um, this can be closed now. Let's uh, go back to this. So, 
Uh, like we did last time, let's take a vec2 and call it uv and uh, call in the vuv.st vuv.st here. Okay, in color, let's bring it here. So uv So this is already pretty good. Um, let's go back and put this in a 16 by 10. Is that how we want to do it? Yeah, let's do it this way, 16 by 10. Um, and let's check out our points by getting viewer active, hovering over the texture, pressing on V, and now I see my points. So uh, actually I do want my texture to be um, in an correct aspect ratio right now. it's everything is um, is not is normalized between 0 and 1 so that's why I wanted to import uniform float import my U aspect okay and to be sure I'll take my uh, UV dot R UV dot X times my aspect ratio so we see this just tried to scale, but it did not work for a very simple reason. I am not in 32 bits. And when you're in 8-bit as is default, um, your pixels values will always be, always be stuck between 0 and 1. So by doing this, everything's, everything, everything looks good now. Okay, I'm back. Let's go back in 10 by 10, just because not 100 by 10, but 10 by 10. So, let's just make this a little more readable. So this is our output. So we got a, a VEC2 here, a zero, which represent the blue at zero and the alpha at one. I'm actually gonna want to use this, uh, this blue component here. So, um, now let me bring in my vec2 resolution which i did just call res if i'm not mistaking you res wonderful and uh i want to calculate the p scale actually so which is going to be the particle scale float p scale p scale is going to equal um it's going to be equal one one divided by and let's let's do it by res x and let's bring in our p scale here so in that in that sense um our resolution will always fit at uh, the size of each of our rectangles will always fit in our uh, given resolution hopefully <laughs> okay this works let's go back in uh, a normal mode texture mode and let's connect this to a null with alt n call it null pose from here, let's bring in a rectangle. Let's see if everything is is working fine. Nothing has to change in here, which this is why I'm doing all the the p scale um, shenanigans in the GLSL. So here, let's put the instancing at on, and default instance up is going to be null pose. I need R and G. This does not work right now because I have to scale it with my B, which is my p scale. Okay, and this, we're not sure if it's working right now because it's like one full on grid. So let's go back here and let's divide it. Let's do 0.9. So this seems to work perfectly uh, when I'm looking at it like this. And if I bring in back my parameters, if I do 16 by 10, oh, that does not work. Okay, I know why. Because we're always going to try to stay between 0 and 1. Um, so bringing back our code here, p scale is going to be divided by res y, and that will work perfectly. And will it work perfectly in both directions? Um, oops, if I do 10 by 16, yes, this works perfectly. So let me bring in back my code here and let's take out the, the 0.9 and put back the one. So everything is perfectly 
um, touching one and the, other, and, and the other, so that's why we don't see any separations. So you know what, let's keep a mini separation just to help us figuring out what's going on. So I'm put 0.99, all right, 0.95, there we go. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much it for um, the, the setting up of our of our instances, we'll be uh, moving other uh, attributes soon enough. Now let's create the texture that we'll be applying on each one of these instances. And as this true tr shed um, pattern is super simple, we only need uh, one uh, one texture that we will only be rotating. So let's bring this, and this can be in um, in this resolution in uh, 256 by 256. It should be fine. Let's call this null text sure with only one T and uh, let's put those in the right um, dimension so I actually cheated so I, I know uh, what's the value I want I've prepared that okay uh, offset from the center 0.5.5 so what I'm actually trying to do is have um, a half circle perfectly connecting the um, the center of each one of the edges and then so the fill center can go to gray deep gray the border is going to go to white or off off white and the border width here that's what we're trying actually to create has to be 1913 like this So is is this working? To me, it doesn't look like it's working, but let's let's check it out. So an easy way to know if it's working, it's let's uh, take a flip, and hmm, how are we gonna do this? Um, if we take an add, it's not gonna work because. Yeah, well, it kind of works right now, but I'm getting too much. Uh, so let's put the fill color at zero and the background color at zero, and we'll, we'll re-add those. So let's flip. Yep, that's why we have. That's what we want. So we're connecting everywhere. And an easy way to verify if this is working, let's put it. Bring in a layout, and let's just connect it. Connect the, this one a couple times, and let's uh, align it in a grid. Okay. So this works, it's connecting fine. Maybe it could be better, but whatever. Okay, cool. Let's bring in a constant so I can re-grab my background. And let's not, let's not have it. This, this should not be a, an add, it should be an over, so I'm not losing my off-white, uh, which, which was desired. And let's bring me a constant. And let's have it in output operation. The the blending operation is going to be under. So this was super easy, just like this. Then let's create a constant for our geo. So this let's recall this got for truchet constant map because we rename everything. And let's bring in this guy. And then let's connect our constant to our geometry. And look at this, already we're having like a fun pattern. <laughs> okay. So this can go uh, over here. Press X because I don't need to I don't need to see all those wires, uh, those connections all the time. Okay, next let's put a little rotation in those guys so we uh, we get those uh, this pattern we're looking for. So first let's bring in a noise. And we're just connecting it to here because we really desire to have the resolution. We're just going to specify that it's noise, not noise plus output. Um, let's let's put this in nearest pixel, nearest pixel, and uh, 32 bit. And we don't want this to be from zero to one. We want it to go from uh, minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. We want our noise to be zero centered. 
and now let's scale it. So now before it was going from here, it's going minus five to 0.5 because the amplitude is a five and the offset from zeros, it goes, it cuts both the ways. So we can specify this when we're going to rearrange the whole, the whole thing. It goes from minus 0.5 to 0.5 and we want it to go from minus 360 to 360. Okay, let's plug this in an operator we're going to call, a null we're going to call orient. This is in 32-bit floats, wonderful. And now let's take this and in our rotation, we're just going to be needing the R. Okay, this does not work at all. Why is that? Because we want to um, uh, we want to limit our rotation to a certain value. We want to round it up to a certain value. So let's bring in a limit and let's go to quantize. And uh, we want to quantize that. We want to round at the at the round, not floor ceiling, and at ninety degrees. So we want our, our our circle to only rotate 90 degrees okay and this does not work because it's not connected okay wonderful so we got um, those some some of them are uh, rotated in um, on the y-axis oh you know what because we just need to rotate it on the z-axis there we have it and that's it. This is pretty much done. So we have a pattern that we created super easily, which is modifiable. The only problem right now is our limit will uh, is not going to help us to do some quick modification. So you would have to intervene right after. But we can do all kind of like little patterns where we can bring this in, just a ramp. Let's see how it's going to look. Yeah. All this is fun. All this is cute. I like it. Let's let's add it for some reason. So put this like this, like this. And let's uh, pump up the resolution. And here we have like this kind of maze thing. And let's go back in our shader here. Yes, you can come back. And let's take out the 0.5 so our connections are very are super tight so we don't even see the intersection and always already this is looking real fine by me let me put it back in the 16 by 9 no uh, 9 by 16 and maybe we could um, like I really like I often like to use edge just to create a more like graphical look to my to my to those drawings does this help? Mm, barely. But you get it. You, this can go a long way. So uh, if you do something fun with it, please share it with me. I'd like. I'd love to see uh, all the original things that you guys are gonna come up with. And uh, if you like this uh, quick uh, little tutorial, please uh, consider uh, subscribing and putting a like, a comment on what you'd like to see next. And uh, until next time, have a good one.